Hello again, everyone. Edwin Miller back once again in this YouTube astrological segment. I'm going to be talking about the solar eclipse uh, in Gemini that's going to take place on June 10th, uh, 2021. It will be at 19 degrees uh, Gemini. And a solar eclipse in astrology, for those of you that may not know, is like a regular new moon, except it's much more amplified and intensified. It can be a period of life uh, altering uh, new beginnings. Um, it could be the start of some monumental achievement or accomplishment. Uh, it could be ones that uh, new beginnings that will last for a much more, you could say, sustained uh, period than a regular new moon. And there can be very prodigious energy at this time. Uh, one can feel you could say exceptionally rejuvenated and revitalized and the things that were frivolous and superfluous may very well be discarded at this time whatever may have inhibited you and held you back may be going to the can basically at this time and the thing about this too and it's a time where one can simply start something brand new and getting all the, you know, the obstacles or obstructions or what have you out of the way in order to do so now, being in Gemini, this might be done with a lot of very animated, vivacious, and spirited energy. Uh, one may try to uh, embark on manifold projects simultaneously. It's very important at this time of this uh, new moon solar eclipse in Gemini because it is in Gemini that you know you don't start try not to start too many things because it's a thing as I've stated in previous previous videos where one can, can dissipate the self through lack of an integrating uh, purpose. And the, the thing about this is, and you might not, it might be harder to st finish things if you're starting too many of them at once. And the thing about this is this could give, uh, you know, new moons in general in astrology can give a tremendous initiative and enterprise. And you may feel like, you know, nothing could hold you back uh, at this time the energy you know you feel may be nearly inexorable uh at this um, point in time and the thing about um this is as well i mean everyone collectively of course can be uh, impacted by the solar eclipse uh but especially people with the gemini or cancer uh, sun moon or ascendant now gemini of course because it's going to be uh in their sign uh, and then can the zodiac sign cancer because of course the moon, moon does rule cancer and cancer is simply impacted and affected strongly by all transits and phases of the moon because uh, you know it rules them and I think perhaps this is largely attributed I would say to why the zodiac sign cancer can be really you could say very fickle moody and temperamental to say uh, the absolute least and and it can be especially intensified for Gemini if this transit makes a conjunction to Gemini's uh, sun, moon, or uh, ascendant. Of course, if it hits the sun, it can be felt really on a very conscious level. If it contacts the moon, it might be more on an unconscious level. And the ascendant, of course, is very worldly. And people around, you know, per person that has this Gemini ascendant with this, with the uh, solar eclipse making a conjunction to it, will be able to see this vibrant energy and, and wanting to do start something new really uh, readily. And uh, the thing about this is, when you look at this as well, um, this could be, I mean, for many people, this could be the start for many in simply being, you know, more versatile, uh, more diversified. Um, it can be a period of starting, to, you, know, about, you know, being more about diversification. Some may even welcome a new sibling, a cousin, or neighbor because of the correlation with Gemini in the third house. Um, it could be the start of something that requires very good good manual dexterity. It could be such as auto or refrigeration mechanics. And one may begin something new with writing or communication. And if one, say, one is a writer, it might be simply writing more eloquently and, you know, learning uh, new words and increasing the vocabulary at this time, which could really pay dividends 
in the long run in terms of you know writing ability and getting noticed for for this um, it can simply be a, it could be a means you know as far as being more eloquent of attracting the right person to somebody and it could be a time where you begin to open up communications and be more loquacious especially if you're somebody that's been kind of you know stagnant as far as you know being sociable and communicative this could be that time where you decide okay I need to open the lines of communications and remember that mercury is going to be retrograde in Gemini at this time so you could be going back to those uh, communications which might be ones that were very eloquent ones that were about many things it could have been it could be simply maybe it, it had something to do with an issue that was uh, communicated or writing or maybe it was something that involved you know plagiarism or forgery um, in some negative cases this could be a time too where this could be actually the start of a um, of a Gemini career and especially if this falls in the second or the sixth or the tenth house in the natal chart because those are what I would I mean they are the money houses uh, in astrology and one may start uh, a new position um, it could be in a communications field such as data or satellite communications it could be reporting journalism um, say if it falls in the seventh house it could be like a court reporter because the seventh house is connected with the law and um, you know, things of a legal nature Gemini of course could be associated with reporting it can be um, somebody many may start um, this could be a very good uh, opportune time for people to start writing a book it could be becoming a writer an author something that requires dexterity it could be auto refrigeration mechanics it could be even juggling anything that requires the strong use of the hands being proficient in use with the hands um, uh, and the thing about you know when I look at this you know, transit as well this could also be you know in some cases you know it could be something that involves multitasking as well um, and being somewhat versatile it could be some position that requires uh, mimicry copying others which can include comedy of course uh, it could also be uh, you know some cases it might be even doing something with forgery or plagiarism investigation say if this falls in the eighth house of investigation um, and you're somebody that's worked in you know uh, you know, been an investigator worked in law enforcement already now uh, in some cases well this may also manifest in the departure of a male figure that played a provocative role in one's life it could be a father could be a husband or just a prominent male friend say it in it and it can be maybe a Gemini Sun or ascended person or simply one that embodied Gemini characteristics the person may have been somewhat mercurial or vacillating or versatile somewhat superficial but it could be somebody that was very talkative loquacious and quick-witted and um, the thing about this too uh, I would say especially if it's a friend and the person was somewhat superficial in this case it could actually be something you know, that, 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 that opens the door for you to find maybe someone else as a friend that might be more uh, you know that, that might be more sustained and might take a friendship more seriously as an example now if this falls in the 10th house that could reflect the father because the 10th house is connected with the dominant parent which is often the father the seventh house can reaffirm perhaps a significant other that may be leaving and the 11th house could be uh, a friend um, a significant friendship um, another thing too uh, it's important to look at the house this falls in as this could impact the delineation and interpretation uh, mine is going to fall in my second house this could be very significant for me in terms of diversifying my values I just joke when I say so I'm being flippant maybe having a diversified portfolio and it could be simply for me about just valuing versatility 
more so than usual. And hold on a moment, people. Anyway, it can also be, um, you know, valuing versatility again. It could be something where this could manifest in starting some Gemini money-making endeavor, uh, such as, you know, writing or journalism. I can't do anything that requires strong manual dexterity because I have the extensive nerve damage in my arms and hands, as I've stated in previous videos. But ironically enough, that may actually be attributed partially astrologically to my own natal moon in Gemini. Now, the thing I want to say, too, is that, you know, new moons, uh, most of you may know, are generally uh, auspicious. I believe sometimes there can be something negative, like a negative connotation could be connected with it. I mean, it could be a start of a new health issue, uh, especially if this falls in the first or the sixth house in the natal chart, because the first house, of course, is connected with the physical body. The sixth house rules physical health, and it can be certain, you know, it'd be about health debilitations, uh, physical ones. And if it's being in Gemini, it could be the start or onset of a Gemini health related matter, such as some issue with the lungs, or it could be the arms, the hands. It could be a carpal tunnel syndrome. There may be nerve damage to the hands or to the arms or shoulders. Uh, it could be a breathing uh, related issue like uh, asthma. It might, excuse me, might be something that, given that this is taking place at a solar eclipse, it might be something that may be more sustained and protracted, such as very extensive nerve damage to the arms and hands that might either be life altering or take a prolonged period of time to actually rehab and, and recover from. Now, it's also, um, it's important, of course, to look at the aspects that this is going to make two points in your natal chart. And the thing about this is, uh, is this, of course, could impact the delineation and interpretation as well. Now, mine is going to make a conjunction to my natal part of fortune in Gemini. Maybe this will be very auspicious for something prosperous for me. It's going to be, yeah, this could be very fortuitous. Maybe it will be very prosperous considering it's happening at the time of the solar eclipse. I sure hope it is. And it's going to make a sextile to my natal Venus in Leo. And that falls in the fourth house. And, and again, that my part of fortune in Gemini is in my second house of money anyway. And the thing about this is this could simply manifest in something that's going to be very beneficial and auspicious for money and uh, it could be extravagant home purchases if I'm moving or something it could also mean that this could be tied into what I enjoy as far as entertaining you know, being extroverted which is Leo energy um, enjoyment is Venus I mean I'm about enjoying and enter and really enjoying um, entertaining and being extroverted which is Leo of course from the home and um, from the YouTube astrology videos and uh, it could have something to do with being noticed from that maybe it does something as far as leads to something with you know something monetary uh, as far as some writing goes which could be of course astrology you know readings or something but anyway and it could lead to something prosperous in communication. Now, another thing that is significant um, to look at are the electional aspects that this makes uh, at this time, of course, because that could impact how this energy uh, manifests the solar eclipse. Now, it's going to make a conjunction uh, to Mercury in Gemini, Gemini, and it will also square uh, Neptune in Pisces. Now, on the good side of things, um, the conjunction that it makes to Mercury and Gemini uh, could indicate that there could be very good ability to articulate what needs to be started in very eloquent, very, very verbose manner, and, and not much difficulty in disseminating that information, being able to speak about it. But keep in mind the fact that Mercury is retrograde um, indicates that there could be more review about this than usual. 
Now, the square that it's going to make to Neptune, though, suggests that, you know, one may be a little bit more lethargic and maybe a little bit more inclined to fantasize and daydream a little more as opposed to taking action. But the thing about it is it could be in the thought process because keep in mind that new moons and solar eclipses are introspective. We're still having it's still a full, it's still a uh, new moon uh, solar eclipse so there will still likely be abundant energy for many but it may be modified by that square to neptune now the thing about it is too you may actually you know um it can be a time for some where they may you may initiate something connected with the new moon energy but some of you may have um you know be actually laying down thinking about it in a very more relaxed mode you know, and, and keep in mind that it's, it's a, not, so it's not something unrealistic like maybe a remote control bicycle uh, idea. Remember, uh, bicycles are connected with local transportation, and Gemini is associated with that. Maybe a dial telephone from your computer if that hasn't been invented already. You know, just going on, you know, your laptop, whatever, punching in a phone number and dialing it. I don't know if that's that may have already been invented, but that just, you know. One of those ideas and the thing is that people may be coming up with communication ideas uh, during this time of the uh, new moon solar eclipse and they might be life altering. It could be, it could be good for somebody that is an innovator in, uh, in things that are associated with communication. Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Learn and Saints, stay well.